And let's bring in Alex Perche in Washington, D.C., along with ABC News contributor, former senior CIA field operative Daryl Blocker, for more. Uh, Daryl, Ukraine is now trying to counterattack Russian forces and try to push them back away from the capital. Yesterday, you talked about how Ukrainian forces have somewhat of a home turf advantage. Is that the case in this area? It is still the case, but pushing troops back as opposed to holding ground are two completely different military tactics. Because the numbers are clearly in favor of the Russians, pushing, uh, pushing them out is going to be much more difficult than holding them off. Do you think they can do it? I think in time, uh, all the things being, being uh, considered, including political, um, diplomatic, that yes, they will push them back, but militarily, no, I don't think they can do it. Got it. All right. And Alex, the Pentagon released a detailed list of the weapons and military equipment that it's sending to Ukraine. It includes hundreds of Stinger missile systems, thousands of javelins, anti-tank weapons, 100 armed drones, thousands of guns, body armor helmets. So how does that compare to what Zelensky is asking for? Well, Diane, you're absolutely right. There's $800 million in new funding uh, for the Ukrainians' uh, fight against Russia announced yesterday. Uh, and look, it, it checks off a lot of things on the wish list for President Zelensky, but notably missing from that, uh, those MiG planes that he pleaded for yesterday, and also notably missing uh, the, uh, the the closing of, of, of the airspace over Ukraine, uh, the, 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 the White House and, and, and Congress, the overwhelming majority of Congress. Congress not going along with a no-fly zone, uh, and so that is something that uh, that Zelensky continues to to, to push for. But right now, uh, it's 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 not coming to him, at least not from the U.S. Daryl, what do you make of that list, and what impact do you think these weapons could have and equipment could have on the battlefield? I, I think the equipment is less important than the will to fight. The Russian forces don't seem to have that will to fight, whereas the Ukrainians recognize that them not fighting is the end of them as a nation and, and as a people. Um, it's just one of those things that military, you just can't gauge and judge someone's will. And clearly, Putin underestimated the Ukrainian resolve. And Daryl, I've heard that a lot. Can you explain why? What makes you say that the Russian forces don't have that will? They have the numbers in terms of personnel. They have the numbers in terms of tanks and planes and artillery, and yet they just can't seem to break the will of the people that they're trying to subjugate. It's one of those intangibles, and I think the Russian forces weren't properly prepared in terms of they don't really understand why they're doing what they're doing, and I don't think Putin or his inner circle have done a good uh, job of trying to justify to them why they're doing it. The days of troops, even soldiers, going out and blindly following what their leaders are telling them to do, that's another time and another day. They have the same millennial and Gen, and Gen X folks that we do. They question everything. They want to have a reasoning why they're doing these things, including soldiers, and especially right now, the Russian soldiers. And Alex, I want to talk about this comment from President Biden calling Vladimir Putin a war criminal, because when he was first asked by a reporter, he said no, that he wasn't prepared to call him that. And then he asked for clarification on the question, and then he said outright, I think he is a war criminal. And then later, we heard from the White House press secretary that the president was just speaking from the heart and then echoing the previous talking point that there's an official investigation underway by the State Department, and we'll have to wait for the res those results before the U.S. can officially uh, call Vladimir Putin a war criminal. So what happened there? Well, Diane, I mean, everything that this administration has done with regards to uh, Russia's war with Ukraine has been measured, has been calculated, and, and has been uh, very deliberate, whether it be uh, how uh, how they, they label uh, President Putin to whether we ban Russian oil and gas to how we deliver military supplies and weaponry to Russia in an attempt to make sure that uh, what we do in aiding Ukraine is it seen by Russia as a further provocation 
in this ongoing conflict. And so they've been very, very delicate. It's a tight line that they've walked. And so you have this moment where the president outwardly calls uh, Putin a, a war criminal. And, and then you see the response from the Kremlin, uh, which was pretty matter of fact, saying uh, that it's unacceptable and unforgivable such rhetoric from a head of state. Well, now the White House walking this back a little bit. You heard the White House press secretary saying this was Biden speaking from the heart. Now, the UN Security Council is supposed to have an emergency meeting later today. Do we know what's on their agenda? And, and do you think that this comment could come into play there? It's, it's very possible that this comment could come into play, especially given just the sheer outrage uh, in, in, in rhetoric from, from, from the Kremlin. Uh, but I think also what's going to be focused on at this uh, UN Security Council uh, meeting, they're going to be talking about the growing humanitarian crisis uh, from this war in Ukraine now entering its third week. That was something that was uh, uh, put out in the notes to ABC News from uh, one of the top diplomats that will be involved in these talks later on today. Uh, but I, I think looking at that refugee crisis, we're now talking about millions upon millions uh, who have fled Ukraine uh, is going to be a big topic of focus. And Daryl, when you're looking at the ground and, and you're talking about how Russia has not made uh, the advances that you expect, they've had some setbacks lately. So what do you think Putin's next move is? How do you think the Kremlin will respond to all of this? I think he's going to double down like he always does. I think he's going to continue to try to encircle Kyiv. Kharkiv, and if he makes a move on Odessa, that is going to be very telling. That is the, that's the, the capital, of course, is very important, but the warm water port of Odessa, historically, um, from a Russian perspective, from Putin's perspective, is equally as important as the capital. All right, Alex Prashay, Daryl Bakker, we appreciate it. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.